Are all the myths and folklore about kangaroo leather being the strongest leather in the entire world and being way better than cow leather that most boots are made out of? And do Indonesian bootmakers actually make a decent boot for the price and some of the best value boots on the market? Today we're going to find out by cutting apart these fleshy beauties that were donated by boots underscore and underscore patina on Instagram because these were $457. So I'll put a link to his Instagram below so be sure to check him out. Indonesia was under Dutch rule until the 1940s and allegedly they introduced boot making to that part of the world. And there were a lot of factories for shoes and boots there because of the price of labor. And then people started splitting off and making their own boot factories and as that Dutch rule ended they continued to make boots they continued to make shoes and they kept the quality from that heritage era of the 1920s and 1940s and that's why they make their boots really handmade not a ton of machines are involved and why they're such a classic looking boot but now let's go over the differences that we can see before cutting this thing in half that's different from some of the regular boots that we see in the similar price range the first thing that might stand out to you when you look at this boot is the half sole on this boot and i think this is the first time we've actually done a true half sole it's a super old school looking outsole and as for the midsole unlike some of these cheaper boots that have cork in it or like a, a rubber midsole this has a full leather midsole like we've seen in some of the pacific northwest boot makers and it is a goodyear welted construction and i believe they're hand welted most of the american made boots and most of these boots in this price range they have a big machine that sews everything together but these are as far as i know are all hand stitch which is pretty crazy and one big difference with this goodyear welted construction from indonesia that you would never really know unless you cut one of these in half or watch them make it is most of these Goodyear welted boots that we see they have the insole and then there's a canvas rib attached to the bottom of it that this welt is sewn to with this style of boot they take that in that leather insole and it's so thick that they're able to cut a channel into the actual leather itself instead of attaching that canvas rib and then they sew that welt into the insole itself. So it's a lot more of a labor intensive process, but it allows your construction to be a lot flatter and it allows you to have a lot stronger anchor point into the actual insole itself. And then if we move to the inside of the boot, it has a half sock liner with some foam underneath, but this foam is super thick and it stops really abruptly. There's, it doesn't taper off. And so when you put these on, you can feel that ridge of that foam and it's kind of obnoxious. I wish they would have skived that down a little bit. And then as for the leather, so this is, this is the fun part of the video because we've never seen kangaroo leather and there's so much hype around it and not even, not sneakerhead hype, but like old folklore, like saddlery and whip making, like not kinky whip, but like uh, bull whip making lore that kangaroo leather is the strongest leather in the world and i've heard that repeated over and over but i've never seen anybody test it so that's what we're going to attempt to do what is it about kangaroo leather that makes it potentially the strongest leather in the world well it doesn't have any sweat glands so most leather you see from cows it's got sweat glands it's got pores it's got all these things on the inside those little teeny holes that you see in the top of leather in a high quality leather that's the sweat pores and that's the hair pores where a kangaroo doesn't have any sweat pores it's the fibers are so tightly packed it almost looks like cordovan it's very it, it, looking at the cross section it's almost identical to cordovan which is the most expensive leather in the world this skin structure also allows the leather to be split into thinner pieces and still retain much of its strength for example a split cow leather hide of 20 percent original thickness retains on average two percent of its original strength a split kangaroo leather skin of 20 percent original thickness retains on average 50 percent of its original strength so splitting it down to these thinner thicknesses, it retains a lot more of a strength than cowhide. Let's run some quick tests. And what we're gonna do is take a piece of the kangaroo leather from the other boot that we've already dissected and compare it to the American tanned cow leather that is 1.2 millimeters thick. It's a veg tan leather that we use in our wallets that's tanned by Wicked and Craig. So it's one of the best American tanneries. It's, it's a full grain leather. So for the first test, we're gonna test its, its tear strength. So we basically cut out a few of these little swatches that have holes on each end. These are basically just our keychains, but we popped another hole in them. And we rigged it up to our engine crane and put the scale above it to, to measure as we crank on it, how many pounds did it actually take to tear through this leather. So for the wallet leather, the first test, it tore through at 15.4 and the second test tore through at 15.6. I actually thought it would hold more than 15 pounds. So a little bit disappointing, but then we moved to the kangaroo and the first test on the kangaroo, we started cranking on that thing and it was holding pretty strong and it finally popped at 35.4. So more than double 
the cowhide. So the second test, we thought maybe it was a flaw. We do it again, the second test went even higher. The second test went at 37.4 pounds. So double the strength when it comes to tearing through than the cowhide. Then we move to the puncture test. So this is, I feel like this is getting a little bit more scientific, but barely. So the way that we did this test is we cut these discs out of the different leathers, the, the cow and the kangaroo, and we mounted it inside of this, this is a ring maker for coins from early days of Rose Anvil. And basically what this does is it clamps down on these circles and it allows us to take that arbor press and perfectly pinpoint it in the middle of the swatch and see how many pounds it takes for that nail to pierce through the swatch. So the cow leather was first and the first test we pierced through at 16.5 pounds. The second test was super close as well at 16 pounds. So then the thinner kangaroo leather that's a lot more supple and a lot more malleable, I thought for sure it was gonna fail, but we threw it in the testing apparatus and, and started pushing down with the arbor press and it finally popped through at 31 pounds. Just in case it was a flaw, we, we put another swatch in to test it and this one popped through at 38 pounds. So once again, more than double the strength of the cow leather. And then for the third test, we wanted to do an abrasion test. So we cut these strips out of the cow leather and kangaroo, put it over the belt sander and cleaned it between each round to make it as fair as possible. We ran four different samples, averaged it out, and the cow leather took on average one minute and 38 seconds to push through. And surprisingly, the kangaroo took one minute and 17. So the kangaroo leather, at least for this test, is less abrasion resistant than the cow. So clearly some of the myths about kangaroo being the strongest leather in the world are true because double the puncturing and double the tearing is, is pretty hard to argue with, at least with our limited testing abilities. So now let's chop these fleshy beauties in half to see if, they're, if the Indonesian boots really are as good as everyone says they are. All right, we got them cut in half a few days ago um, because we needed to do our test swatches, but let's see what's inside. So super high quality construction as we expected and as everyone says, and I love that I love this channeling insole because usually you only see us in really really high-end boots or high-end dress shoes so it's cool to actually show you guys this on the channel because we've never cut anything apart that does this and now you can see that hand stitching that sews this insole to the welt and you can tell it's hand stitched because they're they're spaced out 10 millimeters for each stitch and you wouldn't do that on a machine that's something you would do hand stitching to conserve how many stitches you actually have to do there are some synthetic materials in here like underneath of the insole there's this fiberboard cellulose type material. And you might think that's that's a bad decision, but that I, I guarantee is there mostly to prevent squeaking because if that was just leather on leather in there, that would squeak a lot. But also the heel counter and the toe stiffener are also synthetic. So there, there's trade-offs either way. Like you still you still probably could do a leather toe stiffener that's this thin and a counter that's that's this thin, but it's it's harder to keep that rigidity and that that shape. I personally just like the unstructured toe box. I love the way it rolls and folds. But some people like that shaped toe and, and a, a slimmer heel that still maintains its shape. So every synthetic material they use, it comes with a good reason. So there really is nothing inside the shoe aside from those little synthetic materials and maybe that steep drop off on the foam that there is to critique. You know, it's a very well built boot. So are Indonesian boots worth the money? Are they really as good as everyone hypes them up to be? So this retailed for $457. And I think it's well worth the money. You know, you look at this compared to some of the Pacific Northwest boots, you compare it to Viberg, you compare it to all these other brands that are making this high quality of a boot. These are just as good for just a little bit less money. So let me know what you guys think. And if you want to see me do a full kangaroo leather analysis breakdown, comparing it to different leathers like 
veg tan versus chrome tan versus boot thicknesses let me know and let me know in the comment section help this video out give it some give it some love and thanks for everything you guys do and thanks to boots and patina for donating these fleshy beauties see ya